there's no denying the brutality of Muay Thai. It's called the art of eight limbs for a reason. You have elbows, knees, kicks, and punches, all used as weapons to inflict as much damage as possible against one's opponent. It's one of the most violent combat sports to date, something surely not suitable for children. Or is it? In this video, you'll be shocked to learn the average age children start fighting in Thailand as we examine one of Thailand's most controversial realities, child fighters. Here in the West, we might imagine an average 8-year-old's day to consist of school, a little homework, and some play, with plenty of Legos, toys, or video games to occupy the time. In short, more comfort than discomfort. Now imagine an 8-year-old waking up at 4.30 in the morning to go on a 6-mile run, followed by 2 hours of grueling Muay Thai training bag work, pad work, conditioning, sparring, then to have to go to school, get home, and do another 2-3 to three hour session later that evening, and repeat that for 5-6 to six days a week, all to get ready to compete for their second or third fight of the month. Those not living in Thailand or familiar with its culture might view such a kid as an anomaly, like some kind of rare endangered animal. However, in Thailand this is quite common, almost all of the best Thai fighters Samar Tibuaka Sanchai to name just a few, began training and competing around 8 years old. Some start even younger, at 5 or 6. To get an idea of the scope, a Thai investigative journalism center reported that only 10,373 child fighters had registered between 2010 and 2017, while according to boxing officials nearly 200,000 children under 15 regularly compete. But mostly off the books, which often means no strict adherence to safety rules and regulations. As we will see later, this can have devastating consequences. Now why in the world would a parent allow their 5, 6, or 7 year old to compete in a brutal sport that results in, quote, a steady drop in IQ and brain function for those who fight, according to a 7 year study on the effects of Muay Thai on children's brains. Well, before we can comprehend this, we must understand the economy of Thailand, the socioeconomic status of its citizens, and especially those of the rural towns and villages. In the past the past three decades, Thailand has done a lot to reduce poverty. Sadly though, inequality still remains high. The changes made have yet to fully trickle down into many of the rural sections of the country, where low levels of education and difficult living conditions persist. Thus, Muay Thai is still one of the best and only options for true social mobility. A kid fighting Muay Thai can make as much money in one night as their parents make in a month, if not more. For many poor rural families, Muay Thai can literally be the ticket to a new life. According to studies by the US Department of Labor, the National Youth Office, and the International Labor Organization, more than half of the children fight to contribute to their family's finances. It can also bestow great honor and respect upon fighters, their families, and their provinces. Because the rural areas are also rife with drugs and crime, Muay Thai is often seen as a way to keep kids from veering down such a catastrophic path. It can also teach discipline, courage, and build character, qualities that are very important for struggling families. And we have to remember that Muay Thai is Thailand's national sport. To become a professional Muay Thai fighter gives one celebrity status, where you're idolized and revered. So before we outsiders cast judgment, we have to take these factors into account. As an American, it would be a little hypocritical to judge. After all, we let our children partake in one of our national sports football, where head injuries are common. It's easy to sit back and say you wouldn't let your kid take part in such a barbaric sport, but put yourself in the shoes of a poor farmer, where you're scrapping to get by with little options to move up in life apart from Muay Thai. Ask yourself honestly, would your opinions change? Would you allow your kid to train and fight? if it offered a possible exit route? What if you knew it would give them structure and reduce their chances from getting involved in a life of crime or idleness? It's all about perspective. But because not everyone shares the perspective, the debate on the subject continues to stir. Some view it as human cockfighting, where people stand to get money by placing large bets at the expense of children's health. Others see it as an honorable profession, one that can uplift a fighter 
their family, and their village. The push and pull of opinion can be seen in the various acts that have been put forth and then shut down. In 1999, for example, there was a petition for the Thai government to ban child boxing. The motion failed, however, as farmers argued that the rural economy would fall apart without the purses their children brought home. Instead of taking no action, though, the Boxing Act of 1999 was passed, which required that fighters under 15 must have a parental letter of permission. Then, in 2003, language to prohibit children from boxing for pay was put into the Child Protection Act. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, the government continued to recognize the 1999 law. As we see, despite the pushbacks, little is actually accomplished to stop child fighting. Even death, it seems, is not enough to put a stop to it. In 2018, a 13-year-old fighter, Anucha Thasako, was knocked out unconscious, suffering a hemorrhage at his brainstem which resulted in his death. He had fought 174 bouts since the age of 8. And while that might sound like a lot, it is relatively common among child Thai fighters who often fight up to 3 times in 1 month. Like most other child Muay Thai fighters, he was fighting to earn money for his destitute family. In an interview with his grandma, she said she had told him previously to stop boxing. His response, Grandma, what else can I do? I'm young and I can't work. If I stop boxing, how would I earn money to pay for school or support you? This is a perfect and saddening illustration of the situation that hundreds of thousands of Thai children are in. Sports Minister Weerasak Kausarat vowed to introduce further legislation to the country's Boxing Act to protect young fighters. The amendment in particular proposed to ban all fighters younger than age 12 and require those between 12 and 15 years old to be provided with safety equipment, especially head guards. Of course, this brought out opponents of the new regulations like training camp manager Sudip Sengyarn Jitmanon, who had this to say, These children are like young plants that will grow to continue the life of Muay Thai. If we can only start training people at 15, it doesn't give them time to develop. Sukrit Perkrithawet, a lawyer to several boxing camps, said more of the same. He also added that the proposed legislation would quote, make Muay Thai become extinct. He also brought up the poverty issue, saying every family's economic background is different. People with money send their kids to play golf, tennis, swimming, or shooting, but poor people can't do that. We can only do boxing. This is our only option. And it's no doubt for that reason that the legislation was never passed. The outcry from millions of rural farmers would be immense, who also represent a prolific voting base, something treasured by those in political positions. Somchart Charoen Wacharwit, president of the Professional Boxing Association of Thailand, said in a Vice News interview that the regulations and laws are already adequate, it's just that they're not being enforced. Which brings up an interesting point and yet another problem needing to be solved. Later in this Vice News interview, the governor of the Sports Authority, a governmental body that is responsible for enforcing laws and regulations, said they only have 700 workers. With Muay Thai being fought all over the country, that simply isn't enough workers to provide proper coverage, he claims. When asked if the legislation would pass, he said likely not, as you quote, cannot separate Muay Thai and Thai people because it is in our blood. So even if new laws were passed, would it really change anything? Overall, the issue of child fighting is tough. Personally, I am able to recognize that each side, those who support it and those who don't, both have valid points for their argument. On the one hand, Muay Thai is a respectable martial art that can build confidence, discipline, keep kids off the street, and give them a chance to escape poverty. On the other hand, it is a dangerous sport that can negatively impact kids' brain health. The bigger issue, perhaps, is the poverty of Thailand. Were that not an issue, kids wouldn't have to put their health on the line to contribute to their families. In essence, child fighting is a symptom of that bigger issue. Would it not be wiser to deal with that? Regardless, it is a tricky issue. Leave your thoughts on the matter in the comments below, and subscribe to Iron Kicks for the best Muay Thai videos on YouTube like the one on your screen right now.